Well, we're underneath the hood of our orange and white, tangerine and white, uh, 396, 1970 Chevelle SS style car. This car does not have paperwork with it. We are going to represent it as an SS style car. We believe it to be a real SS 1970 car. Without documentation, very difficult to prove, but it shows every indication that it is an SS car. It does have a 12 volt rear end, it does have disc, it has power brakes in the front, it has a big, huge. A big block radiator that it uh, came with uh, if it were an SS car. Uh, it does have the heavy duty suspension. It does have the reinforced uh, uh, swing arms in the back. It does have the heavy sway bar in the front. So every indication is that it is a real SS car. One thing I do know for a fact, it is not the original numbers matching engine that this car was released with. It is a 396. Uh, it does have a uh, Carter AFB carburetor on it, Edelbrock carburetor. It has a Team G air gap intake manifold on it, and it is a tall port manifold. Again, without pulling these valve pan covers to determine exactly which heads are on it, I don't know, but it does indicate that it does have the rectangular port heads and intake manifold on it. There's a new alternator in it. As I stated, it does have a new uh, power brake booster and master cylinder with the proportioning valve, which will also indicate uh, it was a 396 uh, SS car uh, to begin life. It has a seven blade flex fan with it, a brand new interstate battery, uh, fuel pressure regulator, does have power steering, does not have air conditioning. The original core support is still intact in the front of the uh, vehicle. The uh, engine is detailed out well. It uh, doesn't show any leaks or any uh, indication that it, uh, it's had any oil seepage anywhere on it, at least not from looking at this end, but we'll see from underneath when we do our undercarriage presentation. It does have a, a Mallory distributor cap on it with uh, high temp uh, silicone wires and Mallory coil, which is integral with the cap itself. It appear to be, without checking it, but it appears to be about inch and seven eighths long tube uh, headers on this vehicle, and they're in excellent condition. There's no uh, rust or anything on the uh, the headers themselves. The flanges are all nice and shiny yet. Uh, the boots are high silicone boots that uh, go with the uh, silicone wires. Really nice engine compartment for our uh, 1970 SS Chevelle. Let's take a look around outside and see what we can show you. Hi, you're at Hangsters in Daytona Beach, Florida. Today we're going to present a 1970 Chevelle SS style. We do believe it is a real SS car. Again, we have no documentation for this vehicle, but all indications are that this did start life as a real SS car. So we're going to present it as such. Um, the paint on the car is absolutely beautiful. We'll go over all the cosmetics of it first, try to point out any imperfections that we have. Hopefully I won't miss anything. I'll try to uh, be as thorough as I possibly can with any deviations or imperfections in the car. Within reason, this is not a new Porsche or a new 488 Ferrari, so we're going to take it as a 1970 Chevelle. Uh, gaps around the uh, hood, the fender, really nice condition, about an eighth of an inch the whole way around. You can see a real nice fitment. The paint on the car is absolutely gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. It does have a conduction style hood. It does not have a functional conduction hood on it. It does not have the flapper on it, uh, but it still functions as a conduction because the air still does come in from the back part of the, uh, the hood when it hits the windshield, which is a high pressure area uh, to feed the air to the engine intake system. Front end of this car, the uh, chrome basils around the headlights you can see are absolutely new. The chrome on them is absolutely beautiful. There's no pitting, no marks, no scratches whatsoever on them. None. Zero. SS designation on the front. The grill the same way. Just as nice as you would ever expect it to be. No marks, no chips out of it. Front bumper. Really nice. Uh, fitment. Fitment is very, very nice on the front bumper assembly. Marker lights in the front, nice crystal clear lenses in them yet. No marks on the front of the bumper, no little nerf marks or anything. The front end of this car is absolutely stunning. There's no dents, marks, deviations, chips in the paint, 
looking at it across, um, there's nothing. Cow induction designation on the sides does have the correct type GM hood pins on the fronts that are functional. Uh, great front end on the car. I can't tell you that there's a single thing out of place on this vehicle in the front. Let's see what we can find on the side for you. Okay, driver's side of our 1970 SS 396 Chevelle. Side marker light is nice as you'd want to ever find one. Nice and flush. Wheel lip molding. No dinghies. A little bit of stone chips from age right here on the sides from about right here down which would be common uh, for a car of this age. It hadn't been replaced. SS396 designation on it. This one says 454. It's a 396 in it for sure right now. Uh, 454 designation on the outside. Trim around the uh, window. No marks, no dings whatsoever on it. It is a tinted windshield. Someone's added some additional tint to it. Uh, but it, it is a tinted window on it. The hood to the front fender is really as nice as could possibly be. The front fender to the door to the rocker panel is absolutely beautiful. Could not possibly be any better. Roof just as smooth as glass. There are no marks, no little dingies from any uh, uh, issues through the years. Nothing falling on it or stones hitting it or anything. Drip rail molding as nice as you'd ever want to find. Again, someone has tinted these side windows to match the tint on the top part of the windshield. Southern car, um, kind of a commonplace thing. The window wipes are just as precision fit and new as you could possibly find. Where the rubber transitions onto the paint, it, it's so finely fit that you can't even put a fingernail underneath it. Just beautiful, beautiful fitment there. Door handles brand new, um, rear view mirror the same deal and there is one on each side uh, but they're correct for the uh, uh, 1970 Chevelle. Wow look, that's as nice a fitting door as you'll ever ever find on a, a GM car. Beautiful setup. It does have a set of white lighter, obviously uh, uh, white lighter tires on it. It does have a set of 8 inch rally wheels on it. The uh, hats are 67 hats, so they're kind of sunk down in. It should have the taller hats on it with the flutes cut on them. We do have a set of taller hats. A lot of guys like these shorter center caps. Some guys like the correct taller ones that would have come like on a 1970 car. If it's an issue, we can swap them out for you. Not a problem. Quarter panel. Nothing whatsoever on the wheel lift molding. Sail panel. Absolutely no indications of any work ever being done. Someone, if they did it, they've done an exemplary job. Again, tinted back window, trim around the back window. Same as the front, no marks, no dings, no nothing in it. It's really, really nice. Also, all tin. There's no, uh, no Bondo evident anywhere on this guy. Side marker lamp in the back, as nice as it was in the front. Down at the driver's side, this is as nice as you're ever going to find one of these cars. It's, it's absolutely as sweet a fitment as you'd ever find for the door, the fenders, the quarter panels, all the, uh, the, the window wipes, uh, everything on this car fits just as though it should. Uh, not a single mark, by the way. I couldn't find a single stone chip on this whole driver's side. Let's see what we can find out back for you. Okay, we're at the rear of our 1970 Chevelle SS car. Look at the paint on this thing. The paint is just absolutely as nice as you could possibly ever hope to have a paint job on a car. You know, the uh, Hutter Orange with the white stripes just kind of jumps out at you. And the stripes are very, very nicely put. It is cleared all over, so when you run your hand over it, it's not like the stripes are painted on top of the orange paint and then you can feel it. Someone has done the paint and then cleared over the whole thing. So they're on there for keeps. Rear bumper fitment, you'll not find one any better than that. That is as sweet as you're ever going to find one correct style exhaust tips from 1970. The lenses with the um, argent trim around them are absolutely like new. The plastic is nice and clean and clear, nice and red as it should be with the little sidebar, uh, backup lights integral. 
Same with this one. The rubber SS pad on the back. Absolutely beautiful. Chrome on the bumper is as nice as can be. There's no pulls on the uh, uh, rear volance in the back. Uh, the back end of this car is the same as the front. I mean, we can't find a single thing so far on it. And again, no marks, no chips, no dings, nothing anywhere so far. Let's see what we can find on the uh, passenger side because there's nothing to report so far. Okay, up the passenger side, starting in the rear. Again, side marker like really nice fitment. Quarter panel, nice as can be. Nice sharp tin. Trim around the rear window. Same as the other side. No dings, no marks, no uh, indication that someone had pounded on it trying to uh, install it. Wheel lift molding, the same as the other two. We're three for three now with no marks. Again, these wipes are they're new, and whoever put them on, I, I can't remember seeing a set put on with this much precision. Somebody did a really great job. Look at the fitment of the uh, windows. You can stand over the garden hose. I don't think you could get anything wet. Again, the sail panel. There's, there's absolutely nothing on this car so far. The uh, little tiny bit of a ding right here. You can hardly see it. You won't see it, but I'm looking at it just at an angle, reflective uh, from the uh, light up above. Mirror to match the other side. Again, tinted glass. New door handles, just as sweet as could possibly be. Quarter panel to rocker panel to door. The fitment is absolutely, absolutely as nice as you'd ever find. Trim around the uh, front window. No dents, no marks. Again, tinted windshield. There's a wiper mark through the years. One of the wipers must have come loose and the metal part scraped up as it, uh, it swept up across the windshield. There's a little bit of a mark there. You can hardly see it, but it is there. Probably a, a buffer from the uh, a glass company could take it out for us, not a problem. Looking down onto the dashboard where it transitions onto the windshield, neglected to mention on that side, but it's absolutely, absolutely as new as could possibly be. You could not find a cleaner area where most of them are crapped up, um, which, by the way, the pad on this uh, dashboard there's no cracks, no fading, no distortion, nothing whatsoever. It looks just like it did in 1970. And again, check this out. Look, I can't remember seeing a Chevelle with this kind of fitment on it. This is really, really nice. Again, SS 454. Wheel lift. Marker light. Back where we started. No chips, no marks, no dents. I can't find a wave or a deviation on this car anywhere. Again, we're not dealing with new Porsches and Ferraris here. We are dealing with 1970 you know, cars. We're, we're playing with cars that are 50, 55 years old. Um, this is as nice an example of one that you're going to find. It's a 70 Chevelle. It's a big block car. Started life that way, at least every indication that we have. It is not the correct engine for the car. Um, we took it to be a 396. Again, it's a big block Chevy. It could also be a 454, but we're going to call it a 396. Um, the car itself, we've gone over everything cosmetically to this point, and there's absolutely nothing that I can tell you is out of place. This car was never this nice in 1970 when it was produced new. It never had this finish or this fit to it in 1970 when this car was delivered new. Paint is exemplary, the fit is exemplary. We're going to do an interior presentation for you in a second. Uh, 70 Chevelle is a very iconic car, very sought after. Be great to meet the potential buyer. Jump on a bird, fly down here, take a look at it. If you're local, please drive over. We'll be glad to host you and present the car to you. We'll put it on the rack for you. You can drive the car, you can spend all day looking at it so that you can acquaint yourself with your purchase. Uh, this car is as nice as 70 as you're going to find without documentation, but it's also going to be priced accordingly. So take a look at this car. This is as nice a Chevelle as you're ever going to find. It's here available here at Hangsters in Daytona Beach, Florida, and this is a car that you'll love to own.
Hunter Orange and White Absolute Knockout 70 Chevelle SS car. If you can find a better combination than this one, let me know. This thing just screams at you just sitting there. Uh, again, every indication of being a real SS. Uh, the round face gauges in the dashboard, uh, all clean and clear as they should be. The correct SS steering wheel designation uh, on the steering wheel and also on uh, the door panels, SS. Staple shifter with the console. It does not have the full instrumentation in it, however, it does have a couple of auxiliary gauges underneath the dash, uh, water temperature and oil pressure. It has a aftermarket uh, GM style radio in it that fits in. No one's cut anything out of the dash or, or distressed it in any way. By the way, the dashboard itself is absolutely like new. All the trim that's usually worn around the uh, perimeter of the uh, gauge cluster is still just as nice and new and intact as it could be. Uh, headliner, tight as a drum. Uh, rear hat shelf, hat rack, whatever you want to call it, has two auxiliary speakers on it, probably to go with this upgraded aftermarket radio. Correct original style parchment type um, headrests in the car. They're not uh, uh, aftermarket. These are the original ones. These are the molded ones that came with the car. It does have a set of uh, parchment seats front and back that match. Side panels in the back are correct for the car and they are uh, parchment also. The interior in this car absolutely is as new as you'll ever find one. Carpeting's nice and deep and black. Doesn't need to be dyed. It's not faded anywhere. Car does have seat bolts front and rear. Uh, the interior of this car is absolutely as new as you could possibly find. It even has the shoulder belts both sides with the uh, correct uh, GM clips that came with them. Sun visors are the original ones. We got one that doesn't want to stay up. It's a little lazy. It needs to be tightened up a little bit. Rear view mirror doesn't have any marks or uh, fading in it whatsoever like a lot of them start to get milky around the edges. Um, again, the steering wheel, no cracks in it. Let me check. No, nope, no cracks in it whatsoever. I can't find a single thing on this vehicle. Uh, all your door cranks, your, your uh, openers uh, are nice and chrome and, and, and shiny the way they should be. The Astro ventilation system all intact and still workable. This car is as nice inside as it was outside and I can't tell you a single thing on it. Um, functional glove compartment in the console. There's not a single thing on this car that's a miss. I can't tell you a thing on this vehicle that's wrong. The outside was exemplary and it duplicates it with the interior the same way. Uh, we're going to take the car for a ride. We're going to do an under chassis presentation for you and then you'll have a complete, complete over overage of this car so that you can make a decision on it. But it is here at Hangster, so take a look at it. All right, we're in our tangerine and white. 70 uh, Chevelle. Let's stop here a second here. Uh, we got we got a fuel gauge that functions. I know we have a speedometer function because I drove the car. Uh, we got a, a trio of idiot lights. However, we do have functional oil pressure and water temperature just, just starting to come up right now uh, under the dash. We do have a couple of gauges there that do function. Got a nice strong motor with a lot of cam in it. A horn that works. That's the lights. Wipers that work. Uh, radio, let might as well try it. Well, it's, it's, it's on. It's on. Just speed as well as the trunk bike. Radio does work. How about that? Okay, turn signal left. I know they work. The indicators on the dash do not function, but the turn signals do function externally. So we do know that they do work. It does have the correct staple shifter in it. A lot of cam in this motor. Let's go for a ride and see what we got here. Got a lot of rumpity rump to this guy. and drives straight and true as you'd ever find. Uh, I had the car for a couple of days, 
Uh, just driving it. There's no hands on the steering wheel driving down the road. Let's try it now. No hands brakes on us. Oh, head, head to the other direction. Go straight. Here, I'll try it again. No hands. Brakes work well. There's a little bit more back than was in the hand. Tranny goes into overdrive just like it should. Nice straight running car. straight running car. Hi, we're underneath our orange and white 1970 Chevelle SS 396 454. We're going to call it a 396 though car. <coughs> this car is about as nice and clean a one as you'd ever want to find. You can see the motor's been out and refreshing. Uh, we, we just had this car out a little while ago. Uh, as you notice, there are no oil leaks on the transmission, on the engine, on the bell housing area, or the tail shaft. This car has no leaks whatsoever evident. At least at this point right now, this car is not leaking. No antifreeze in the front dripping. Uh, there, no power steering leaks. There are the hoses in the box and the pump. Engine's been out and refreshing. Uh, original transmission cooling line still going forward to the uh, radiator. Our long tube headers going into a three inch collector, into a two and a half inch pipe. Uh, frames in the front are box frames that transition onto C channel frames that go the length of the car and then transition back onto the box frames in the rear. No marks on the uh, subframes at all that I can see. And one little tiny guy here from a jack stand. There's one there. There might be a partial one there. Really hard to really hard to tell. New shocks in the front. New backing plates. New calipers. New rotors. All new hardware for it. New mounting bracketry also. New lines. Uh, brand new brakes in the front. And they are disc brakes in the front. Appears to be a 700 R4 transmission in it. The uh, transmission support going across uh, from the subframe or from the frame uh, sections, the C channels. Uh, no marks on it. A fresh mount on the back of the tranny. Ooh. Tie rod ends appear to be relatively newer. Uh, they don't appear like they've had much age to them. All the fittings on them are still nice and uh, fresh looking. Nice grease or uh, fittings on them yet. Nice car in the front here. I see absolutely nothing that's uh, not aligned in the front. Floor pans uh, where they uh, roll down off the firewall area down under the car are still the original ones and they still look really, really nice condition. Doesn't appear to have any deterioration whatsoever on them. Speedometer cables not leaking either, which is another source of. Uh, uh, oil leaks on these vehicles. This thing has absolutely none at this point. You can see there's none. Zero. Absolute zero. Uh, we're about halfway back through. The floor pans on the front are as new as you'd ever find. The structural supports on the floor pans themselves are all there. No one's uh, tried to jack it up on those through the years. Another couple little jack marks on the sides of the C-channel frame going toward the back. Just normal usage through the years. Uh, original uh, brake lines, uh, front to back, they haven't been replaced, nor do they need to be. Uh, they're in excellent condition. The, let's see, 
fuel line still intact, just the way it should be. It's still the original fuel line. Also, doesn't need to be replaced. Set of uh, turbo uh, Flowmaster type uh, mufflers on the back, two and a half inch in. Floor pans in the rear are original. Still have some of their original sound deadener uh, undercoating on them from the factory. Uh, we're halfway through this car, better than halfway, and there's not one single thing uh, out of place at this point. I don't see anything that's uh, uh, a miss on this car at this point. Does have the heavy duty sway bar in the front. It's a nice car so far. Let's see what's on the back half of this thing, and I think we got a nice car under here. Okay, second half of our uh, 1970 uh, Hugger Orange and White Chevelle. Uh, again, F41 suspension on this particular vehicle. Uh, structurally enforced uh, swing arms in the back that would be correct for an SS uh, car. The F41 sway bar in the rear, 12 bolt rear end in this particular car. Again, the uh, Flowmaster mufflers you can see are brand spanking new. Two and a half inch in, and it appears to be two and a half inch out also. Uh, so it's two and a half inch exhaust system the whole way. The uh, full box frame structures in the rear uh, where the uh, C-channels transition to, really nice. Uh, there's no marks on them at all through the years from being jacked up that I can see. Uh, no leaks on the rear end as you can see. It is a 12-bolt Chevy and it, it, absolutely no leaks whatsoever. Tires, by the way, on this car are all four brand new. There are uh, very, very little usage, if, if any, on them. The um, floor pans in the rear are as nice as you ever find. They're totally undisrupted. Uh, new brake lines in the rear. Finned drums in the back, which would be correct for this car. Air shocks also new in the rear of this vehicle. The original gas tank still has the original factory uh, uh, splatter coating on it yet. Uh, the uh, rear subframes. <coughs> C-channel type subframes in the rear. No jack marks on them, uh, no deterioration. The uh, tie-in bar that connects the two uh, uh, frame sub uh, structures together is absolutely undisrupted. No one's grabbed a hold of it with a hook or anything through the years to pull the car backwards. Uh, the rear pan is again uh, undisrupted. Drop downs in the quarters are just as they were in 1970 when it left the factory. I don't see anything on this car. Uh, floor pan, um, any of the tin that I can see that's been replaced on this car Everything appears from under here to be original. Uh, again, I, I, if it's been done, I can't detect it in any way. I don't see anywhere it's been sealed. Anything that's been done, the original factory floor pans for the trunk appear to be intact. Um, I can't see a single thing, nothing. And again, you can see this entire vehicle. Uh, we just went over it. There's no uh, oil leakage whatsoever. And uh, this thing was just driven. Um, it's as nice a vehicle underneath as you're going to find. It's it's solid. It has a lot of originality to it. It's not painted up underneath like a show car would be. It is not a show car. This thing is a driver quality or better, uh, but a very very nice vehicle. It's uh, it runs well, drives well. Uh, it's got a 396 in it that we know for sure. It may be a little more than that. It's hard to tell without measuring a bore stroke ratio on a big block Chevy, but it does have a little bit more cam in it, a lot more cam than it came with from the factory, as you'll hear and see. And uh, we got a nice car here. You should take a look at it. It's at Hangsters in Daytona, Florida.